we are so excited you guys are here today for the eight virtual marketing ideas for authors. I'm Heather Wallace, just for all of you who have joined and have, haven't met yet, my beautiful co-host, Carly. Say hello to the world of virtual book, book marketing. We're going to introduce ourselves in a second, but we wanted to come up with some ideas that authors can use now that you know in-person events are kind of off the table. So we don't want anyone to lose momentum when it comes to book sales and marketing. And so in the comfort of our own home, which most of us writers are more comfortable anyway, we <laughs> wanted to give you some ideas that maybe you have and haven't thought of. As we progress, we'll start with the more common and maybe take a little bit easier to implement and we'll go and it'll be a little bit more complicated uh, and it might take a little bit more advanced planning. Hi everyone, I'm Carly Cade. Most of you who've met me know that creative writing and horses make my spurs jingle. I am a, an award-winning independent author. I'm the host of the Equestrian Author Spotlight podcast, and I'm also a creativity coach. I help uh, fellow authors start, grow, expand their author careers. And uh, I'm so excited to be here today and to talk to you about some ideas for virtual marketing. There is a plethora of things that you can do in the virtual space. So Heather and I had a fun time paring this down to just eight ideas, but I think these are all things that are easy to implement and fun to do and really can get your book out into the world during this this uncertain time. On to you, Heather. Okay. So I was just letting a couple more people in. So I'm Heather Wallace. I am the writer of The Timid Writer, which is a blog based on confidence and my journey as a returning adult equestrian. I have written Confessions of a Timid Writer and Girl Forward, which are both nonfiction memoirs. And, you know, personal journey stories in narrative form that I hope help people, mm. you know, in their own confidence issues and uh, give a little bit of relatability so they can maybe share what's going on in their lives and feel more comfortable doing it. So I'm really excited that you guys are here because I too have benefited from many of these marketing ideas. And if I haven't done them, there are things that we've come up with that we will be doing. So we hope that it will help other authors as well. Nice little title page. Mm. <laughs> Facebook Live, as we said when we first started, initially we are going to be starting with something that's relatively easy to implement. Facebook Live is, is an often underutilized way of reaching potential readers. A lot of authors tend to be quite shy, and so the idea of going live is a little daunting, but it's a great way to connect with people because they really get to see you. One of those is a meet the author question and answer session. So you know, maybe five, five questions that most readers would potentially want to know about you or might make them buy your books. Another thing would be themed Q&A, like a five fun facts um, about an author, about uh, a character, about the process of writing the book. I myself did a book launch Facebook Live, which uh, was fantastic because I got a lot of pre-sales leading up to the release of my book, Girl Forward. And then when I had the launch, I did a virtual read, a giveaway, and I ended up reaching a bestseller status that day because of all the downloads. Uh, included in that book launch was a chapter reading. Something that might be of interest is doing maybe a chapter a month on Facebook Live where people can sign in and join. The nice thing about doing Facebook Live is you actually record and save your video. So you can share it on different platforms later or all together again on Facebook. In June of last year, I did the Girl Forward book launch. I'm sharing it again in August, uh, which is really pretty cool because I'm looking back and seeing the stats, but also reusing it for the anniversary of the event that I wrote about. So there's a lot of really cool things you could do about it. You can add it to your website and cross purpose. Carly, did you have anything you wanted to add to that? I did. And actually a, another thing about Facebook Live, I know we all get nervous about going live because you know you, you sort of you do have to strategically plan these things. Facebook the organic reach isn't as big as it once was at one time, but they do strongly promote lives. So when you do do a Facebook Live your Facebook notifications will pop up and say, so-and-so is live now. 
and you and there's a bigger reach because they're really promoting this live feature. So you can go in and you can watch it live at the time, or you can rem you, you will see someone will see that you were live, and then they can go in and watch it later. So there's a lot of longevity about having gone live. There's the immediacy of reaching your target audience through the notifications on Facebook, but then you can take that, like Heather said, and cross purpose it. You can download the video, share it in a group. You can share it on YouTube. You can share it on your website. You can repurpose that content. So it's content that can live longer than just that moment in time. Heather and I wanted to ask, have any of you ever done a Facebook Live before? And if you haven't, what was your hesitation? And this is another thing to remember too. Readers actually want to get to know you as a person and, and learn more about you. And a Facebook Live is a really authentic way for them to get to know your personality, like the person behind the book. Because the more people like you, the more they, w they want to know about you, and the more they'd like to read your books. I love this from Rondo. She said, I did a Facebook Live Christmas greeting on Christmas morning in my pajamas on my Facebook personal love page. It. Now that is so sweet. And that is like a really great thing to do for your readers, to wish them um, Merry Christmas. Is there a time limit on Facebook Live? Heather, do you know the answer to that one? Judy just asked that question. There is no, currently, there's no time limit on Facebook Live, but you're going to be, you, you're you going to want to consider your audience, right? So for the book launch, I did an hour just because I felt we were doing a lot of giveaways and I was leading up to things, answering questions. So I was incorporating a lot of what we put it here onto one Facebook Live. In my honest opinion, I feel like snaps, little snippets are better, 15 minutes, 10 minutes. If you're going to read a chapter, you can make it a chapter, but let people know in advance. Like this is a, this is a launch. This will be an hour or this will be 15 minutes. This will be one chapter. Uh, give them an expectation so you can manage it. And that way you don't have people coming in and out. You kind of retain their attention. It's perfect. And Anna, Anna did a Facebook Live to promote her online class on perfect. Horse and Myth. I saw that, Anna. Uh, and Kathleen, I use it all the time. If, I love this. And this is something to keep in mind. If yeah. it really bombs, you can stop and delete the video. <laughs> That's, fantastic. That's true. And honestly, that was my biggest fear going on Facebook Live was that I wouldn't have anyone joining. And looking back at the stats, I think I had, you know, maybe 13 readers but there was so much engagement so many comments which were fantastic but then i ended up having you know quite a few purchases of my book and so i look back and i'm like well it seemed a little awkward but at the same time it actually was do it fulfilling the purpose and again you don't lose the content you can keep sharing it and adding to it Yes. And Valerie said she hasn't. She's shy about video. That's all. That makes a whole lot of sense. A lot of us are shy. Yeah. And But Valerie, you just knocked it out of the park on my podcast where there was a video interview. And I think, you know, it's something that takes practice, definitely, to feel comfortable behind the camera, particularly in a Facebook Live. So that's why it's so important to kind of research, educate yourself, kind of plan what you want to say and then get in there. But, but we all know it's live and people love you anyway, because it makes you more human actually. And just a quick note too, to add to that Carly, which is really good is that you can actually ask people to submit questions before the Facebook live. You don't have to go in unprepared. You can say like, we're going to do a themed Q and a Friday at noon. What, you know, we're doing five fun facts. What would you like to know about me? And you can get that and you can choose those in advance. And then you can open it up a little bit if you want to. So don't feel like you have to be unprepared. You totally can be. Now, here's another idea is to pitch podcasts. There are a lot of equestrian podcasts out there and they're always looking for content. But the most exciting thing about podcasts now is that Google actually indexes them. So when, you're, when people are looking for you or for information about your book, if you're on a podcast, that now comes up in, in search. Another thing about that is you're talking with an influencer. It actually gives you credibility, easy way to talk about your books or what you do because you are an expert when it comes to your books. So the most important thing though, and a lot of us here work in the media and are familiar with the art of the pitch. And, and if you're not, the AHP often puts together great information on how to pitch uh, to the media. 
But with podcasts, it's important for you to understand what the podcast is about. Listen to the show a few times, get familiar about what topics are important to the podcast host, and then reach out. And with your pitch, make sure you share information, not I have a book, would you have me on your show? It's more like pull out pieces and be really specific about which topics would fit for their audience and benefit that host. It's very easy to find the name and contact addresses for, for podcasts that you can add to your pitch list. Uh, you know, you can do a search on Apple Podcasts super easily by putting in equestrian or horse podcast, and you would be surprised as how many how many come up. And actually, we all know Glenn, the geek from Horse Radio Network. He is a member of the American Horse Publications Organization, and he hosts Horses in the Morning, which is a show that covers a variety of topics. Heather and I both host podcasts. I prefer an email pitch, but Heather will take a DM, uh, a direct message request. So two very easy podcasts for you to pitch being on and talking to. I know I've talked to some of you on my show already is my Equestrian Authors Spotlight podcast, where I talk to authors about their books. I spotlight their books, but then we take a little bit of a deep, deep dive into marketing and promotion and things that have worked and not worked around marketing their books to others. So that's a great resource for you. And then Heather also hosts the Equestrian Pulse podcast. Heather, do you want to talk a little bit about your show? The nice thing about the Equestrian Pulse podcast is, well, Carly's is specific to authors. Uh, the Equestrian Pulse podcast is actually more general and their biggest audience are equestrian bloggers. So these are the people who you want to spread the word about your books. Not only can they buy them, but they can actually write about them in their blogs. They can share them on their vlogs and so much more. Many of them will actually do book reviews and some actually even have you know, book clubs, which we'll talk about in a little bit as well. And don't underestimate the power of audio. This also goes into audiobooks. Audio is growing faster than any other sector out there right now. People you know, prior to COVID were listening to podcasts on their commutes. Uh, you know, people are listening more and more and reading less and less. So audiobooks, podcasts, all of that is starting to really, you know, people have the little Alexas in their home where they can shout out, you know, listen to a horse book. And then there it is. So don't underestimate the power of audio. And that's just another revenue stream or another channel for you to tap into beyond the written word. Or have you found that that you enjoy the podcast? Or again, is there a hesitation? Are you nervous about getting onto a show and, and talking about your books? Natalie said, I love being on podcasts. I'll talk all day. And I, and I had Natalie on my show and it was a lovely conversation. And she shares so much brilliant information around writing horse books. I, I recommend everybody listening to her episode. I love Rhonda's comment about radio scares me because I'm afraid I'd be too candid. You and me both, but isn't that part of the fun of it? right? So they, people want to get to know you. Here's another comment. I've been on a couple, but I just like a dork. You know, I can completely relate to that. It really does take practice, but the more you do, just like a Facebook Live, the more conversations you have and the more you do it, the more comfortable it becomes. One of my biggest recommendations for, for going on a podcast is a lot of podcasters will send you the advanced questions. A lot of times, I really recommend actually answering those questions because what you're doing when you do that is you're building your messaging and you're getting it in your mind what you actually want to say to that host and the topics you want to touch on. You can also keep it to the side as a reference to look at during the conversation because sometimes a lot of people decide to wing it when they go into an interview situation. But I found the better you prepare yourself and actually think through the answers to the questions, the better you'll come off and the less anxiety you'll have going into the show. So it's really up to you. If you're good at winging it, go for it. But I, I always feel like, you know, actually answering those questions that they send over and having something in your mind that you want to say really brings forth a much better interview. Yeah. And of course, um, just so everybody knows the, my podcast is, is live. So we will edit out some if it's really egregious, but generally it's just like a free flowing thing. So just be warned if you get you know, super nervous. <laughs> now, a lot of you that know me really know that I, I really believe there's a lot of power in authors uniting and working together to collaborate. And an email newsletter swap is a really great way. Uh, earlier this year, I teamed up with Susan Friedland of Saddle Seats Horse, right when, when the COVID thing started happening. And we were talking about different ways, perhaps, that we could, you know, share about our books in, in a creative way. 
And we came down to, you know, let's collaborate with some other fellow equine authors and do an email newsletter swap. If you aren't gathering email addresses and building an email newsletter, you want to start doing that because that is the most effective way to reach your readers and people who are fans of your books because we never know one day Facebook may go away, Instagram may go away, Twitter may go away. You know, things things are constantly changing, but in, but people are still reading their emails. And if you put together a great newsletter, people will continue to want to hear from you. So what what we did here is the the essence of working with other authors is to make it as easy as possible for people to collaborate together. So what Susan and I kind of ran point and we worked together. And what we did is we created uh, a, a email template. And then we also had a blog post to accompany this newsletter swap. And what we did is we reached out. Heather was a part of this. Natalie was a part of this. And actually, I'm going to share some of Natalie's statistics here from, from the email campaign. But we basically talk to our readers about, you know, we know this is a difficult time. We, you know, we, we understand you may be looking for some escape. We all discounted our books in some way for our readers. And we said, you know, here are some other authors that you might really enjoy. And it was a mix of fiction and nonfiction. And what we did is we all just emailed our own newsletter lists. And we all saw a lift in sales from just collaborating and sending an email newsletter together and having a supporting blog post. So Natalie's statistics here are new users went up 70% week over week. Email bounce rate dropped 20%. Face, and, and Natalie was very good at sharing this in the Facebook groups that support equine authors. There's like horse book addicts, horse books for grownups. She shared it. She shared the blog post in those groups. Facebook group campaign generated more interaction and a bounce rate 10% lower than paid Facebook ads. So don't underestimate the power of doing something for free. You don't always have to pay for ads to get results. And the goal of sending users to a secondary landing page increased 400%. So the bottom line is the newsletter swap and accompanying blog posts sent people with the intent to buy to our websites. And we discounted them whatever we were comfortable with. Some people had their books in Kindle Unlimited. Some people dropped to 99 cents. Some people dropped to 299. But it was just a small discount to show our readers that we really care about them and, and wanted to give them some escape during these crazy times. And it was very effective. Natalie, did you have anything to say in chat about uh, participating in the newsletter? Oh, she said, I shared it in regular equestrian groups as well. Engagement was great. That's fantastic. And that is really the power of working together. We can reach, you know, other, we truly believe that other authors are not our competition. When we support each other, we all benefit. And this is a great example of that. So working together really can make a difference. Uh, Natalie said, the blog post has consistently performed well. I just put it into an email last week and got good clicks. Yeah, and, and look at that, repurposing the content and it still has value. That is really fantastic. And, and thank you, Natalie, for supporting and being a part of it. Again, what makes these things easy is when when one person or a couple of people take the point position and create the content that then other authors can make their own, but make it easy for other people to participate in a collaboration with you. We, we provided everyone with correct size email newsletter headers with the all the book covers in a file where they could go download them and put them in their blog posts. We provided graphics that were the right size individual social media channels. Has anybody else tried email newsletter swaps with fellow authors. Uh, Natalie said, and Natalie, I saw this. I am, I'm on both your newsletters. And Natalie did a swap last week with Tudor Robbins for freebies. And she offered one of her books free. And that is another great way being a part of another author's newsletter. And it doesn't even have to be six or eight authors like we did. It can be yourself in another author's email. And then that adds value to the readers for that author too, giving away goodies from another author where you really like each other's books. And that's a great idea with the freebies because you can do a free download of the first chapter or potentially, you know, a first book or a novella or something like that. So if you have something to offer and give these readers in exchange for their support, mm -hmm. then that's always a benefit. And uh, Adrian said she's looking forward to it. Rhonda said she just started her mailing list. Good job a couple months ago. Mm -hmm. Do you use BookFunnel or something else for the freebie? You know, why don't we get into that one a little, little bit in the, the Q&A and we can talk about different ways to do the freebie? Working with online book clubs. So we briefly mentioned this before when talking about bloggers. A lot, there are some bloggers that have online book clubs. 
you don't necessarily have to go through a blogger. Sometimes it's another author. Sometimes it's just a really ad, you know adventurous reader that just wants to promote. And uh, and so there's a lot of different things that you can do with an online book club. Like Carly, I think just got involved with my friend Louise's uh, book club. In due horse, yes, she has a ver- she has a is it the horse girl book club? I, I believe it is, and and she's going all out. She has swag, she has bookmarks, and uh, Lori Bergley of the Maryland Equestrian, who's also an AHP member now, just finished up and wrapped up with them, and they read her first book, Where the Blue Grass Grows. So they select a new author every month to feature on the book club, and they they read the book together, they have conversations about it, and then they they invite the author on when they've all finished to have a Q and A in the Facebook group and talk to them about the book. So this is like this is a great way to replace in store events or events where you travel to, where you can actually talk to your readers and engage them online when we aren't able to get out to the physical events. You know, you can do a reading with the book club, you can, you can actually formulate questions that you provide to the readers to get them to really think about the content of your book. And then you can discuss it in, you know, online or virtual in a zoom meeting and a Facebook live or something like that. The nice thing is you can actually, as Carly mentioned, make a special offer. So in exchange for their email address, one of the things I came up with last year for path international, they needed swag for 600 members. And so I had offered up a copy of my book, but 600 copies of Confessions of a Timid Writer would be very expensive. So what I did was I actually created a QR code for, so you can download, and this does go through BookFunnel, we could talk about it later, but a QR code so people can download the book. It costs me just the price of, of having these postcards made. And since then, I've actually used them in addition to swag or special offers, I've used this QR code you know, for various other cross purposes. So that's, that's something that you can offer a book club, a special download that maybe nobody else gets or an advanced reading, something like that. And don't, and don't forget too, physical book clubs, everybody is, is getting friendly with zoom these days. So, so everybody's learning how to use it, you know, with their families, with their friends. So you can actually offer physical book clubs, the opportunity to have a Zoom Q&A with you. So this just doesn't have to live on Facebook. This could actually, you know, there are online book clubs, but there are physical book clubs where you can offer them the opportunity to do a Zoom Q&A with the book club members. So there's a lot of ways that you can use this virtual book club uh, idea. Giveaways are super powerful tools. Uh, The one thing that I really want to focus on is actually, you know, as Carly mentioned with the newsletter swap, getting together with other authors, but I don't want you to limit yourself to that. I actually do a lot of giveaways with equestrian brands. So you're giving a variety of different materials as prizes, not just books. Don't forget about the holidays. Obviously holidays are great times to host a giveaway, but what I like to do is I like to look for, for maybe the holidays that match up with the books that I write. I write equestrian romance. So I actually just hosted uh, earlier this year an equestrian romance giveaway where I worked with a partner of mine who makes custom leather saddlebags. And he actually, my logo is a woman and a horse in the shape of a heart facing each other. And he burnt my logo into the side of the custom saddlebag. He donated one to me. So I did a read books and ride horses giveaway around uh, Valentine's Day, equestrian romance themed. And the saddlebag was part of it. So the saddlebag was stuffed with copies of equestrian romance. So I partnered with other authors to participate in this. And I used uh, King Sumo, which is a fabulous way to host a giveaway because it, it has social shares. You know, first you get their email address, which is really important because you can follow up with them. But then you can they can get bonus entries if they like your Facebook page, if they like Instagram, if they follow you on YouTube. So there's a lot of ways to have your readers engage with this giveaway. So think, you know, think about your giveaways and, and how you can time them to specific events that are going on. You know, you can do them for a book launch. You can do them for a holiday. You can do them just to do them to get a little extra exposure out there. Fans really like it when you can offer signed books because that's like a collector's edition. In the equestrian romance themed giveaway, all the books were autographed by the authors and then they got this custom saddlebag. Very true. In the spring, I did a small business giveaway. That was the theme. And so it was a local small business giveaway just in our state. They wanted to really promote you know, local equine businesses. 
And so my day job was also was featured. And then also my, my books. The nice thing was I actually, I think I gained something like 300 new followers on Instagram. And then the person who won was so excited. They were posting about it. Every time they received a prize, they would post about it. So you're getting that word of mouth going on, but you're also building relationships with the people you're doing the giveaways with, whether they're the prize winner or, you know, in that loop. So it is very important to maintain good relationships with these people and fulfill your end of the bargain too. Giveaways are becoming pretty, there's a lot of them. So what do you find valuable in a giveaway? What would, what would make you want to jump in and enter. Sarah asked me what the king what the app was that I used for my giveaway. The name of the app was King Sumo. I, I really like it because it helps generate followers and and you get the email addresses, but also it's free and super easy to use. So that's it's King Sumo. I've also used Rafflecopter. Anna said an Amazon gift card would be that's would be a good her one. choice. Yeah, I, I would jump at that for sure. I know a lot of authors, you know, if they have the budget that's the thing you gotta gotta weigh you gotta weigh your budget as well. A lot of authors uh, give away a Kindle Fire when they do giveaways, particularly around the launch of their books, uh, and that seems to get a lot of engagement. That seems to be a very popular giveaway with some of the the bigger the bigger name authors. One thing I would suggest is that, uh, and maybe this is coming from my blogging background, but like you know, working with different brands or you know, have, forming relationship with different brands through social media or whatnot, I've actually reached out to those brands and said, hey, I'm running this giveaway. Would you be willing to offer a prize in exchange for me kind of promoting it for you to my my readership? And actually, I've had some really great luck with that, that then even a year down the road, they've come back to me and say, hey, we've got this new product coming out. Would you be willing to try this? And so it's created this nice business that's been long-term, this relationship. So don't be afraid. If there's a brand you really love, reach out to them and say like, hey, I'm running this. I would love to give out a prize. I love your product. Um, would you be interested in donating said product? And, uh, and you, you know, you might, you might look out. Uh, Adrian says, so far I've given free online classical dressage lessons. Wow. With the exchange of video and instruction and free how to do hands on energy work for your horse. It's always so helpful, but limited. So it's, yes. Yeah, so it's a limited time offer where people get a taste of what you, what you offer in the classical dr dressage realm. And Rhonda says, I know people who enter contests just to win the gift cards or prize, but they may or not may or may not be assets on the email address. That is true. That is always something that that happens with with giveaways. You know, you get people that enter for the giveaway and then just unsubscribe as soon as they they get the prize. But the thing to consider is that the social sharing element of the giveaway does give exposure to to your book, to what you're doing. And that's just kind of the, the natural fact of giveaways is that some people just enter for the prize and then they they go away. But what's really beautiful is when you do get a winner, I often encourage the winner of a giveaway to share photos or you know do a social post when their prize arrives. So so there's a little more extra added impact after the giveaway end. And, and that's always a really beautiful moment. And Natalie has a great point here too. Follow up on your email list with value immediately afterwards, which can alleviate some drop off, right? So don't, so don't do the giveaway, have all these people give you their email addresses and then don't follow up with them. So, so as a matter of fact, after my equestrian romance giveaway ended, I worked with the business owner who created the custom silo bag for me. And I offered all the people on my, that entered the contest, he worked with me to offer them a 25% discount uh, for about a month on any custom product they might order after the giveaway had ended, which is a huge value. I mean, he makes purses, he makes spur straps, he makes saddle bags, he makes all sort of great custom leather items. So that was value for the people who entered the giveaway but didn't necessarily win. So that's a great point, Natalie. Thank you for, for adding that. You know, all of the ideas we've talked about leading up to the is our virtual book tour option. So all the previous ideas can be incorporated into a campaign for a virtual book tour. Ideally this is a structured plan within a certain timeline that really creates a lot of momentum and visibility around your book rather than these one off virtual things that we may be doing. This is a, a plan where you incorporate all of them. You want to be everywhere that you can possibly be and work with influencers, build relationships with them prior, and then have set scheduled dates within your time frame 
to conduct interviews, to guest blog, to reach book reviewers. So it's, it's, a, it's a big, powerful, structured hit that you take all these different elements and you plan out your, your tour. Uh, so rather than one-offs, this is like a, a big package deal with, for 30 days where you pretty much are everywhere that you can possibly imagine. Like a book launch, if you release an Audible or have a re-release, this is a great idea for you to really plan and, and think it out and talk to a whole bunch of people in advance and make sure you have things spread out over different media. Uh, releasing over a certain time period. And that kind of leads us right into this really cool project that I'm working on right now with seven other authors. Uh, we're putting together a box set called Horses, Hearts, and Havoc. It's a multi-author, first-in-series, equestrian fiction box set for adults. So and it features romance, mystery, and suspense novels. This is another example of authors collaborating and uniting and working together. So things to consider when you want to take on a collaboration of this sort. There, there's, a, there's a lot of moving parts in the background. Again, sort of like the newsletter, what I recommend is having two people run point myself and Candace Carabas are kind of running point on this project and we reached out to the other authors to ask if they'd like to participate. So there's a lot of pieces to manage, but this is a really great uh, exposure opportunity, marketing opportunity. And Candace has been in other box sets before and she said that she's uh, in, instantly earned back her investment and then made money. So again, this is another revenue stream for a book that you've already written and in a different in a different space. So th some things to consider. You, you, there needs to be an ISBN number for the project. Uh, there is formatting that needs to be done in the background. It needs to be, and this is an independent, so all authors participating in this box that are independent authors because we have control of our intellectual property and we can use it however we like to. Uh, so that so in the background, there's the formatting of the book, there's the uploading to the different distribution channels, there's uh, working with a graphic designer for cover design. We actually are going to start revealing the cover of this really special project next week. So stay, stay tuned on social media. You'll be seeing it coming at you from the different authors that are participating. Uh, we actually had a buy-in for the for the authors that are participating in the box set to help cover cover design because we're putting behind this an advertising campaign there's going to be a pre-order period where we're launching it for 99 cents and that's the time to jump in uh, before actual launch which will be october 15th of this year so we're putting we're, we're putting the virtual book launch or the virtual marketing plan in place behind this project so if you want a real live example of how that works watch how this box that it develops. Um, there's a press release and a media kit we're developing. Again, there's the management of dispensing the royalties to all the authors that are participating in the box set. And then most importantly, uh, you need to have a contract on these to uh, the outlines, timelines, the author responsibilities, uh, and also Amazon requires the contract be uploaded when you're participating in box set collaborations of this, this kind. The goal of this is to make it easy. So really, all we needed from the other authors were their final edited and formatted books and then we took care of everything else and of course the buy-in and so now we're providing them with templates for the newsletters templates for blog posts we're providing all the social media graphics so it's just easy for them to go out and share a virtual bookstore it replicates a physical location but it's a kind of a one-stop shop for equine authors i'm going to take you through we've actually created this website in advance of the launch to show everybody so i'll do a very quick walkthrough in a second but it's called the bookstore for horse lovers and they it's very exciting it supports and markets equine authors across all genres. And the nice thing, which I will take you really quick to it, the nice thing is that it right now for it's free. You can be traditionally published, independently published, or a combination of the two. And we direct people to where they can buy your books as per your guidelines. So essentially it's it's a hub for horse book authors. We invite everyone to participate. Take us for a tour. I'll take you for a quick tour. So this is the main page. As you scroll down, I just have it divided into fiction and nonfiction at this point. Nice little search function, trying to make it very easy for, for people to find books. A little about us. I wanted people to know that we are horse lovers and authors. So this is a site for authors of horse books, for people who want to read books that are about horses. So on the, the nice thing is we have featured authors on the front page and everybody 
kind of submitted a graphic that was very similar with a picture of them and their books. And the nice thing is these are click through links. So it'll take you straight to their buy pages. Uh, as you can see, you know, they all kind of fit a nice little format. But as we come down, then authors get to submit a couple of reviews, one or two reviews. So there's a beautiful little slideshow where people can read different reviews that have been provided for them. Um, so readers who come in, maybe haven't heard of you say, hmm, this looks good. That's one of my pictures from Mongolia, I had to put it in. <laughs> so a lot of us have won awards or, you know, even though starting out, we want people to know that these are, that we're serious, we're professional. This isn't just, just because a lot of us are independently published doesn't mean that the quality is not there. I've put a link to Carly's podcast which is fantastic for people to get to know uh, authors that are listed on this site and, and so much more. And then this page. So it, this, are you an author of horse books? It takes you to a Google form where you can fill out the information I would need to put you on the website. It's uh, it's pretty quick, gives you some guidelines as well for the graphics and then a place where readers can go ahead and subscribe. The nice thing is that while this is just beginning, ultimately I'd love to be able to have this as a place where we can all say, hey, let's do a giveaway, let's do a promotion, let's collaborate. So I'm just gonna take you back to the top, forgive the scrolling, because I wanted to show you the different genres. So right now, if you click on fiction authors, it's gonna take you to a beautiful bio page where it lists, there's Carly and our friend Lori and Brittany, and it gives their bio, where they can buy the books, their social media. All of these are click, click through. So it takes them, for example, Carly, I'll just use you as an example. It's going to take you to Carly's website because this is where she wants people to come and buy her books. She has links, Amazon, Apple iBooks, Audible, all that. So again, this isn't a purchase site. This is more of a promotional site where people can all come and find a variety of authors that would potentially be lost to them in the shuffle of Amazon and all these big box stores. Yeah. So, so we did, in, in Heather and I got together on a call and we did some SEO research. And so we've got some search terms in here that haven't been utilized. Obviously, the, the domain, Books for Horse Lovers, was a hot search term and we went ahead and she went ahead and grabbed that. And then we've got, you know, as other SEO search terms in the background running. So hopefully this will be a magnet for people looking for books for horse about horses or book, you know, gifts for people who love horses. So this will hopefully be a magnet for that. And then it just redirects to everybody's pages where they want the books to be purchased. And, and keep in mind, this has not even launched yet and it's getting, hits constantly daily and we haven't this is the first time we're we're talking about this project and you know the, obviously this is a work in progress so we're inviting you all to participate uh, and help this grow but but heather hasn't even like really put this out into the world yeah this is and, this and is the already... official, <laughs> official launch and and previews it's free i invite you all to submit your information again we make it very easy in the footer it's just a google form let's see, where you can submit your information, provide a bio blurb. I kind of walk you through it. You let me know. And then I fill that out on the website. Now, eventually, as this gets more popular and starts getting a lot more hip, I foresee it ending up being a kind of an annual subscription for the authors who submit later and apply later down the road. And then automatically, they'll be listed in their genres. It's, so it's booksforhorselovers.com. We hope that you come and submit because we'd love to add more more books we'd love to share it and uh yeah we hope you're a part of it here this is carly and i and where you can find us if you need to contact us directly so carlykcreative.com and timidrider.com so pretty much that works all the way across all of our our channels for the most part uh, if, if you aren't already you can follow us on twitter facebook and instagram i'm at carly k creative and heather's at timid rider so you can find us there and uh i just wanted to say really quickly thank you to everybody for all the cool feedback on uh the the books for horse lovers site fantastic is there a website link yet i want to include it in the horse illustrated article yeah yes. anna 
this is the value of being an AHP member, right? So thank you, Sarah, Conrad, and Anna. A uh, Anna interviewed a variety of us for an article on being an independent author for Horse Illustrated Magazine, in, which is very exciting. And we're looking forward to that coming out. Uh, Heather was interviewed. I was interviewed. I'm sure a couple other people on this call were interviewed. Uh, Anna, we'll definitely get you the link to the website so you can feature it in the article for sure. And, yeah. You. And the link is live. So again, this we, we, we are showing it to you first, have not promoted it at all in any way, shape, or mm -hmm. form, but the link is live and ready to go. So maybe we could have a Q&A dialogue. I know that, was it Rhonda who asked about BookFunnel? We, we wanted to talk a little bit about BookFunnel, and, and I also wanted to bring into the conversation something called, uh, it, it used to be Insta Freebie, but now it's Prolific Works. So I have not used BookFunnel. From what I understand, you have to pay for it. So I've, I've found prolific works to give away free books. Very helpful because what you get in... And so it's a space where people are expected to leave a review when they download your book for free. But what you get in return is their email address. I don't, I don't ever recommend giving away something for free without getting something in return, like an email address. I just feel like it's that way you can follow up with people. And it's... It's like kind of like a give and take sort of situation. So prolific works has worked really well for me, but I know Heather can talk from the book funnel perspective. The other thing about prolific works is you can join in on genre themed promotional giveaways which reach a bigger audience. Book funnel it has a tiered system. So you can have, I think in the most basic tier, it's free, but then if you want to ask for email addresses, which of course we all do, um, I believe it's maybe a hundred dollars per year. And then you can have two pen names and up to 10 titles, something like that. The nice thing about book funnel is that you create your own landing page. So like I said, I have this QR code and these postcards, which is really nice. So if I am going to a client or to an event or you know, and people want to buy my ebook, they can buy it directly through BookFunnel. Um, they can pay me the money and then they get this download. So it's nice because it is paid and then they have to verify their email when they join. So I know I don't get any spam and things like that. So for me, it is worth the cost, but I'm definitely going to check out Carly's. And that's the nice thing about us all getting together because mm -hmm. we all have different experiences and different ideas of what's worked and not worked. So it's really good to take a look and see what everyone's done and then make a decision for what works for you. Yeah. We're resources for each other. And, and, you know, particularly that we're all AHP members, you know, it's like, again, other authors are not our competition. You know, when we support each other, when we stand together, we help each other, you know, so it's like, reach out, we're resources for you and we can help you with you know, questions you might have. Everyone, thank you so much for joining today. And and I wanted to mention, uh, Heather has a group that is connected to the the bookstore for horse lovers. So once you are you submit your books to that website to the space, you can join that group, and there'll be other opportunities to collaborate. And then I'm also working on building a great read, ride, repeat equine author community where I'm going to be sharing some educational tools and I'm going to be inviting other authors in to to speak to you and talk and and talk to authors so you can. Uh, start, grow, and expand your author career. So I invite you to join as a founding member and uh, we're going to do some really fun stuff in there. And a lot of these collaborations that I talked about today on, on this call came out of just working with other authors and partnerships. So that, so that's, I think that that's really important in our niche. I think we, we really should work together and support each other uh, to reach readers. And I think there's a lot more horse books out there than people think. We have to support each other because it really does make us stronger in the end. I know I've learned so much from my fellow authors, and I hope that I've helped other people along the way. So this is just us trying to continue that. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining. And if you think of any questions later, just let us know. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Authors thank unite. You. Bye. <laughs>